The Dakawa Arts and Crafts Community Centre used to be vibrant and a place for budding artists. Established by the ANC and the Swedish government, the centre was once full of potential and hope. The purpose of the centre was to provide skills and training and capacity building to enrich artists. The centre was rich with resources. It had etching facilities, printing presses and a textile and ceramic and beading studio. Local artist and community activist Olile Madinda spoke to us about the downfall of Dakawa Arts Centre and the effect that it has on the local so, arts scene. Even if when Dakawa was falling apart, whatever that means, you know, the art scene in Graham Sound was also falling apart because many groups were no longer active as they used to be and many, like for us as a hip-hop community, we were independent in a way because our rehearsal can happen in our rooms, we use a space for a majority of people, but art became more like individual and self-sustaining in terms of no funding, you could be sustaining yourself, but many people moved to roads. Mono Abisi Sabani, a local artist, had organized a free concert at the center previously this year. The concert resulted in empty seats and a lack of electricity. This center is the only center that we have around here, you see. And this center also has a very important political and historical background for the community. Because in order to, to identify ourselves and have pride you know, in what we are and also in what we are doing, we must have places like this. For me, I can say, speaking as an artist, we use this space for developing a break dance because we used to, we started a group here, so we used to use some of the building, the gazebo outside. Um, basically, for us, we used it in our terms. So I can't speak for those who are doing ceramic and other things because it was happening from different fields. So things were happening to a certain point. This whole area for us was the, the space and inside here was more like uh, the performance space, you know, like where everything would happen. But here, man, was the main place for us, which we, which we enjoyed. The center was not managed by artists. So now, if you're not in control of the space and the vision is not within you as an artist, then whoever is managing the space can make it fall apart whether it's the department, whether it's the board of trustees or the management, you know, like the place will fall apart. It's just because artists were just people who come and use the space and go. And now we come and rent a space that is not in good condition, which we, even for us as artists, we can fix the space. But again, we have to go back to the board members and try to convince them, you know. So there's these other levels that makes a place not very active than it should be. However, the centre is now a shadow of its former self. Takawa opened its doors to the community of Curry Park in 1992. Since then, the centre has been reduced to bird droppings, exposed wires, damaged furniture, and upon arrival, there was no electricity. Previous board members Dominic Thorburn and Frederick Hendricks explained that the board was merely in charge of the paperwork, but the centre's demise, according to them, was due to poor management and leadership on the ground. This begs the question whether the board should be held accountable for hiring unsuitable employees to manage the centre in the first place. The car were, were, you know, in its, in its heyday was obviously a, a, a revered and valued um, arts and crafts initiative both in exile and then initially when it was re-established in, uh, in South Africa. Um, and I believed offered great potential both for local communities uh, and, and obviously cultural practitioners, uh, cultural workers, um, but also for South Africa as a country. Unfairly, many uh, um, community-based uh, art centres um, that had previously received funding from abroad, a lot of that funding dried up after 1994 and money was, was put elsewhere. And some of them learned how to become self-sufficient and, um, and uh, some didn't. Um, I think some were, were kind of dependent almost on a, a kind of culture of entitlement and, and patronage that they, they received this funding. So certainly I would say um, the notion of funding affected it, but um, the, 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 the other aspect that I've mentioned is leadership. Ultimately the board is responsible 
It would be very hard to hold the Eastern Cape government responsible because they're so removed from it. Uh, they gave the money, um, and I suppose at some level they, they ought to have ensured that uh, the money was being spent judiciously. When Dakar was started, it was funded by the ANC alongside the Swedish government. After that, they received a slew of donations. Donors dug deep into their pockets to help fund the centre, including 1.2 million rand from the Department of Arts and Culture in 1999. Just three years later, the centre closed the stores. I have my suspicions, but I don't have any direct evidence on um, how the money just disappeared. Following the refusal of comment by the Department of Sport, Recreation, Art and Culture, we spoke to the Director of Public Service Accountability Monitor, Jay Cruz. What public documents that PSAM holds suggests is, is that funds have gone towards events, primarily those that have occurred during the National Arts Festival and which have used the centre um, for purposes of, of art. Um, so there is a history indeed. Some of the media reports um, point to the fact that the centre no longer received funding from quite a few years ago directly towards it. But that's subsequent to that there have been projects that have been funded by funds that have come from the Eastern Cape Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture Department and have been dispersed um, via a public entity, the Eastern Cape Provincial Arts Consultative Council. Um, and more than that, um, we don't know. The only activity seen at the centre is in the form of community church services, a metal sculpting shop and Joseph's authentic shoe creations. Olile and a collective of artists and art enthusiasts have decided to take matters into their own hands and plan the revive of Dakawa for themselves. We're going to give them a roast to say this is what we're going to do. Meanwhile, while we're dealing with finances and all other things as artists, we're going to come here, clean up ourselves. We don't want money from no one. We're going to clean up with artists. We don't need anyone to say we want money for decoration. No, we artists, we do it ourselves. We paint it, we make it live. So that's where we're going. 